I am in the best mood ever. It's a glorious day. The sun is finally out. Summer is finally here. Everything's blooming. Everything's growing. Everything needs a good water, but I'm in the best mood ever. And I'll tell you in a second why. Let's go. So after two long years, I graduated with my diploma and yeah, I had a, actually had a distinction, which was the highest grade. I am over the moon, you know, the graduation was absolutely beautiful a couple of days ago. My family were there and it was really nice. I had a couple of days off the plot as well, so I'm refreshed and recharged. And on top of that, I've noticed that the rose from Nano and Grinch has actually budded. There's a rose on it as well, so that's another good thing. The runner beans have actually exploded. There's loads of flowers on it. I can see pollinators. As you can see, I'm buzzing. And on top of that, I've been waiting six months to find out whether or not I can go carry on um, with the degree and yes yeah, today i had the news i had a phone call saying that i can continue so that i will specialize in another field so i've been waiting six months for that and the stress behind the scenes has been intense but everything's good uni's doing well the plot's looking amazing there is lots to do and loads of jobs but i'm refreshed and recharged let's get lots of things done today Oh, and also, sorry for the microphone issues that I had last week. I tried my best to increase the volume as much as I can, but it was buzzing, there was a lot of hissing involved, but there was nothing else I could do. You know, it was on, it was on the cutting table and I was trying to edit it to get it out. And sometimes technology fails you. So hopefully, fingers crossed, this week, nothing goes wrong. We shall see. So as you can see, the nasturtiums have exploded. The runner beans over here, there's piles of flowers on there. There's, the sweet peas are all going absolutely bonkers. <sighs> I'm happy. So here's the rose from Nanu and Grinch. And I believe the rose was called the Generous Gardener. So absolutely beautiful. I'm so pleased that what, you know, I'm in such a good mood and look, the rose has bloomed. And while we're on the subject of blooms, some of the dahlias have come out. The sunflowers are all in bloom here as well. Now we've got some other ones down the bottom as well. Some lobelia. And also there's a pile of others coming through. There's some lovely dahlias over here as well. And this bed now is starting to just, just blow up. I can see that the straw flowers are starting to come through now as well. So yeah, I'm very happy today. And on closer inspection on the fig and olive plot, there is an abundance of beans coming. I mean, look how many are on there. So yeah, we might have gone off to a, a bad start, but at least they're coming now. Over on the new plot, the sprouts are starting to like really bush up now. And yeah, before long, they'll start shooting up. So I will need to stake them before long because if you can see already, they're a good foot or two high. So it won't be long before they'll be touching the nets. The runner beans as well, they're starting to bush up now. There's a lot of flowers coming on, a lot of beans. I'm gonna have to give it a good water, but it's too hot right now. So later on, I'll give these beds a really good soaking. I can see runner beans down here as well. God, honestly, music to my ears. So an update on the broccoli as well. So if you remember, I took off the heads. I harvested the broccoli heads. I don't know if you can see in the net. Let's lift it up. So inside here now, if you see where the side shoots are, there's some more broccolis coming. So yeah, don't think that you have to just get rid of the harvest as soon as you've had the first broccoli off. Leave them and you'll start getting some little tender shoots coming through. The swede. So I've actually already harvested the swede. There is a gap over there now, Ooh, but it was actually beautiful. It was beautiful. It didn't need the frost. It still had a lot of um, flavor on it, but everything's starting to jungle up a bit now. These Swedes are doing fantastic, absolutely fantastic. And so are the cabbages. The cabbages are just doing, just doing their thing. I can see a lot of weeds down here now, and I've noticed there's some bark over in the, in the other car park. So I'm gonna go over today and get enough bark just to do this mulch just down here, just to get rid of these weeds. The leeks now are starting to bulk up. I mean, they're a good two foot off the ground already. The musselbra and also up the top and also the giant leeks were just here. So yeah, they're doing, they're doing well. And also, as you can see, the corn and the potatoes are starting to die off now. And I've started harvesting 
some of the charlottes because I've been desperate for something to eat on the plot and those with some nice salted butter on, amazing. I can also see in between all this nonsense, tomatoes are starting to ripen as well. Now I've talked about these before, the... What are they called? Now I've talked about these before, the King Tut peas. You know, the myth that the, bee, the peas were found inside King Tut's tomb. Let me show you them because a few people have been asking about them and I can see some are starting to pod up now and yeah, I thought it'd be a good time to show you what they look like on the vines and the flowers are beautiful. So there's one here that's greenish and it does turn purple. So if you look down here, if you have a look, these are purple pods. Look how beautiful they are. And I mean, if you open them up, inside a beautiful peas. Now these could probably do a little bit longer but they're just as delicious. Now the flowers on them are absolutely beautiful. And I mean, I, I grew them a few years ago just for the flowers. I mean, look at them. They're absolutely beautiful. And I mean, this is climbing up this obelisk now. There's a lot of work to do on this area over here. But like I said, there's a new plot. The apples are starting to bulk up now as well. This is going to be a project and a half. And I mean, I've done. I've done a good half of the plot already in a short amount of space. But this area over here, it's got a lot of work to do to it, but Rome wasn't built in a day, but it burnt down in one. So I'm in the greenhouse checking on the beans. They're looking amazing. All the tumbling toms and also the Pinocchio orange mini bush is looking amazing as well. Start the flower now, but I've noticed over here, I've spied my first red tomato i mean it's small it's very small and by now we're normally gathering a pile of tomatoes at the start of the season but i'm not going to dwell on that yes we're having a terrible season but the sun is out i'm smiling and the first tomato oh the first one right warm and juicy i've waited a long time for that so my plan of attack today was to do this but the sun is more intense than I thought and it's so warm. I brought over an extra t-shirt just in case. So if you see me halfway through this video with a white t-shirt on, mind your business, it was very <laughs> hot. But I can start seeing now the pumpkins are starting to bulk up a bit while I've had, you know, what survived. But I just, I, I'm just savoring the moment that the plot is, is getting through that horrible phase. And at least now, Hopefully summer is finally here. So, plan of attack. I can see that the birds are starting to go into this bush and I'm sure they're taking all the berries off the bushes and that's okay. I'm gonna take a hit on the fruit bushes this year. The idea is to this central path. Now, as much as it looks amazing and it's gonna live a very long life here, I don't like the fact that the plot is separated so much like this and is, is permanent. So I've decided that when you come down the path to the leeks, I'm going to put the fruit cage here. So as you come down the path, you'll hit the gate, you know, about six foot in front of me. So the fruit cage will be in the center of the plot. Now, granted, there is some corn in some leeks. So whether or not I wait until they're finished, and then build the fruit cage. But the idea is then that this path inside, I'll always have a concrete path in the middle of the fruit cage as well. And either side of the fruit cage, I'll have two beds for all the fruit bushes and I can bark underneath, mulch it. And that's the plan for that. So that, you know, I won't have to worry about getting muddy in the fruit cage. And I thought around the side of the fruit cage then, I'd bring a path that goes around here and then down here and go around. So also the fruit cage, which will be here, will also be a bit of a privacy block and it'll be a central focal point of the plot as well. I didn't want it cushed up to the side and then bindweed and brambles could climb up it. I'd rather put the fruit cage in the middle, out the way. And also when you put them to the side of your fences and your boundaries and at the back, more rodents can get in because it's quieter there. So I figured if I put it in the middle of the plot, It'll also detract from rats and things like that because there'll be a higher traffic on the plot for the fruit cage. So that's my idea anyway. You know, if I put it at the back of there, they're going to have a good access into the fruit cage every time there's fruit in there and 
it's going to be very frustrating. Plus, me trying to cut all that back every year to go on the back, nightmare. So I've decided I'm going to put it here. So I'll have to come around, and then also I'll use this path here if I want to access to the greenhouse and things as well. You can still go around it and then come down here. So the plan is I'll come down here, and then over in this area, I'm going to put some more beds. I'm going to put more beds out there, so it will be quite you know, quite traditional and formal, you know, rows after rows down this area. But I can have more fun over in this area with a fruit cage and around the back of here. So this area, new shed might be moving across the here into the middle again. And that means I can put the pond here. Now, I have got a pond on the other plot, I know. But the issue with that pond is, is that it doesn't get enough sun. So the tadpoles and things like that, they struggle to keep the water warm and for energy as well. So. The plan is that I might move the pond over to here and leave that one over there as well or take it up and transfer everything over, but not now. That'll be a winter job. We'll see. There is going to be room for a little pond on this plot, I think. Yeah, right. Plans on the fig and olive plot. I have discussed this mess here so many times. It's the raspberry canes. They were originally on the plot and they've always stayed there, but they need to go. They need a new home, so I think I'm going to put them onto the new plot, all in rows, build up a trellis system or wires, and they'll all be in rows so that I can get them. I mean, there's some beautiful golden raspberries in there and also red ones, so I need to label them really before I plant them, which is which. So I'm going to remove the compost beige as well at the back and put them on the new plot as well. And then all the way from here, all the way down past these beans, it's going to be one long bed and that'll be all my flowers. So all my flowers, I'll have a wall of flowers in here next year of sweet peas and all the bedding plants. You name it, I'm going to put it all down here. The tulips are going to go in as well. It's going to be beautiful. I'm still going to have dotted sweet peas everywhere. Because if you can see there's one, two, three, four trellis of sweet peas over here. And I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. There's, there's a lot to do on this plot. I re there really is. But the flowers aren't an issue. Also, while we're over in this area, Linda bought me this beautiful bird feeder with some birds on the edges. And I mean, if you've seen my videos before, I've talked about having a little bird feeder with birds on the edge. And it reminds me of my grandfather as a kid. So, yes, Linda bought me this, which is absolutely beautiful. It might hang in the tree later on, but for now we're staying here. And she bought me this for my graduation. Now, have I done everything that I planned to do this year? Absolutely not. Was there a massive amount of curveballs put in? Yes, there was. I mean, I didn't plan on taking on a, a new plot, moving from the grapevine plot. There's still things down there that needs to come up, but I cannot do them until I sort this out here. So today is a lovely hot day. I'm spending a lot of time just for me today, but I have got to get a pile of jobs done as well. And one thing I want to do is this. So last year I had a pile of figs and a lot of them came true. A lot of them fell off. And also <laughs> the squirrels and a lot of pests and birds tend to take them off the tree. So I'm going to have to net them up. So I've got some little nets I've had for a long, long time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to individually put a net bag over each fig that I can see. And if you see any more in the future videos, please let me know. So hopefully I can do that because the figs this year are looking absolutely beautiful. So I'm not sure if this video is going to be in one part or two parts or today and tomorrow. And tomorrow they forecast rain. That's all right. You know, we're used to it now. But today, typically it's too hot to do loads and loads of things. And I think that's what everyone's finding at the moment as well is that it's either too hot when it does actually, you know, surface and the sun comes out. Oh, it's too cold or too wet so we're not getting those mediums at the moment but i got loads of things to do in the greenhouse and the polytunnel and i've looked in there and the polytunnel is 42 degrees i am not sweating over that right now um i'll do that either this evening or tomorrow morning early when it or when it's raining actually um i still haven't stringed up the remaining amount of tomatoes so that really needs to be done because they're slow this year but they need to be done because before long they'll start drooping over and that's the last thing you want. So yeah, there's loads of things to do, but there's a few things that I need to tend to today and this, and this is them. This is them. So in this bed, there is some weed through here. Look at the parsnips. These are the Gladiator F1 parsnips. There's a, I actually thought I only had one or two, but I think there's three there. The courgette now is starting to bulk up 
and I've got a few leeks in there, some garlic, some beetroot, but I want to make sure that I weed through that bed as well. And this bed here, I've taken so many lettuces out, but now because of all the stress of the summer and the weather going in, cold and hot and dry and wet, they've bolted. So these ones all got to come out. The rocket has gone to flower now. Um, I'm tempted to leave that in because the pollinators are actually loving this. So these definitely need to come out. And it's okay because I've still got a pile of lettuces growing at the back. Some on my um, veg truck at home. And I need to sow some more as well. So I've got a next succession. But yeah, so I think I'm going to need to get all this out. So let's clear this bed. So I've been told by many viewers, just sit back, relax, enjoy the plot, enjoy your garden. And I forgot that for a bit. And today I brought myself over a sandwich and a few other snacks. And I'm, I am going to spend some time rather than rushing around and trying to get it all done. And remember that it's not a race. You know, it doesn't all have to be done today. And I think it puts pressure on the viewers as well to be the same. And I shouldn't be doing that. So I'm gonna sit down today in the shade, enjoy a little bit of my time here and remember why I do it and why you do it as well. You know, we don't do it because we're trying to compete or trying to get the best garden or the best plot, but we're doing it because we enjoy it. So yeah, cheers. Now, I recently had a question on one of my videos and asked, you know, what made you start? What made you think about having an allotment? And I probably have touched upon that, you know, in my earlier videos, but it was my grandfather and he always had gardening and then it's kind of filtered through, but I don't know, actually, no, I think it was because I was missing having fresh produce and runner beans was the main thing. And when I had my, you know, when I moved into my home, the garden was very small. So I needed that extra bit of land really to put some runner beans and things and, you know, bits and bobs. And then I applied for a plot and, you know, after a few weeks of waiting, weeks, I was lucky. I managed to have a plot and don't get me wrong, I had to ring a few times, turn up at the allotment, show my face a little bit. And I ended up taking on a plot, which was in such a horrible state. I managed to um, turn it over, you know, you know what I'm like. Once I get it in my head, I just carry on and carry on. And it was the summer, it was through the pandemic. And yeah, it was probably, I was lucky that I applied before the pandemic. So I had, yeah, I had a plot because I mean, allotment plots just shot, you know, shot out after everyone went into COVID lockdown. But I obviously worked in a hospital or a hospital setting. So I, I wasn't one of the fortunate ones who could stay at home and be safe. I had to go out and carry on doing my job. But the, the plot was, at that time, was so precious to me because it was a place where where I, because I live alone, I could go over there and I could talk to other plot neighbours over our fences, you know, socially distancing. But from that day on, I remember thinking, this is such a luxury, this is such a blessing to have, and a lot of other people didn't have them. Um, and ever since, I've really appreciated my plots, and it's escalated from a half plot to a full plot, and then I had two plots, and then I've moved from the big full plot, the Grapevine Garden, and now I've got two plots very close to each other. And there's so many plans for it, but I don't know why. I always seem to want to do more and more and more, you know, and people, my friends, my family all know that I always try and achieve and try and succeed in everything I do. And sometimes I put too much pressure on myself and sometimes I don't put enough pressure on myself. And then I, I see the results aren't as good as what I expect. So yeah, so that's the reason why I have my plot is really is because I appreciate it through COVID and I also, it's somewhere to go, it's something to do and it keeps me off the streets, you know? But yeah, so if you're looking for an allotment plot, you know, keep pestering them, keep 
a play in around your area. There's, you know, I'm sure there's other sites, but yeah, don't give up. Keep keep gardening, keep growing because we're such a great community. And you know, I read a quote once that said, you know, all gardeners have hope for tomorrow because if you plant a seed, you're hoping for tomorrow. And I love that. So yeah. Right, I think I've, I've had my food, I've had a waffle, you, you, I've done what you've said and I've sat down and had a little bit of a chin wag. Let's get back to some gardening. So, plan of attack. So I've got a lot of spent compost from the potato buckets and in a wheelbarrow from the start of the season when I started harvesting early potatoes. So the potatoes have taken out most of the nutrients out of that compost now, so it's perfect. It's perfect compost for carrots. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sieve the compost, take out all the lumps and bumps and stones and bits of glass, because you still find it anyway in your soil and in your compost. So I'm gonna sift that so that when the carrots start germinating and they start shooting down, the idea is that if you had a lot of nutrients in the compost, it'll start forking. So if you have forking carrots, you will, it's because they've, they've detected some nutrients and they've tapped off to go and get it. So if, they, if there's none in the compost, it'll start shooting downwards and downwards looking for food. And that's the idea of having, you know, a low nutrient compost or soil. And also, if you're transplanting carrots, which I've seen people do as well, um, that's what happens because they, they've already germinated in that compost and you move them into soil. When it hits that new medium, it forks off then or it, you know, it's just, it's easier to direct so. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I've got some early nonce carrots and I know I'm a little bit late, but we've had such a weird spring and summer. I've already got a pile in anyway, so I thought, well, I may as well try. And what I'm gonna do is it's gonna rain tomorrow. I'm gonna give them a good watering today, pop them in the greenhouse, and then they can carry on growing there. And then after, say, a month of growing in the greenhouse, I'll bring them out, unless it gets too hot. I'll bring them out and I'll put them on top of the IBC tank. That's raising them up about five foot off the ground, maybe six, including the bucket. And that will stop the cat root fly flying over. You know, I might net them as well, just in case wind blows a cat root fly in, but it limits the amount of cat root fly that goes into the carrots by bringing them up off the ground, you know, a good couple of feet. So the plan is to do that. So early nonce carrots, and I mean, if it doesn't work, it's not the end of the world, is there? You know, I've just, I've got the compost ready for next year, and then I'll add in some nutrients to it at the start of the season next year, and start my potatoes off again with our compost. And I use my compost maybe two years, and then I'll replace it or I'll add it to some new compost as well. But let's get that done. So I've sifted as much as I can and I've only done one bucket so far. Look at my fingers already. And what you want to do is you want to push it down a little bit because otherwise when you put the carrot seed in and then water, it'll all drop down and it could be half a bucket. So give it a little firm pushing onto the surface. Make sure it's quite flat. Now I'm gonna just thinly sew the early nonce carrots under here. Now I like to just rough up the top surface a little bit so that it's got a little bit of a bumpy surface so that the seed will actually sit in between all of those little bumps. Now, I say I'm gonna sew thinly, we shall see. We shall see, eh? So, fingers crossed this works, and I mean, if it doesn't, it's not the end of the world. Now, that's all I'm gonna put in that bucket. And then what I'll do is I'll add some more compost to the sift. Now, there is plenty of stones and bumps and bits of bark in this, so, yeah, just giving it a light coating. Now, this compost is quite wet as well because it's been out and it's been raining, so it might not need watering well if it does i'll use a spray bottle because you don't want to be disturbing those seeds underneath and that's all you do is just give it a light dust and a compost on the top job done now in the next couple of days i am going to try and do at least four maybe five buckets like that i may as well use the buckets up i may as well use the compost up and i've got a seed in the space so it's a win-win really but it's too hot to carry on doing that in the heat so I'm gonna look for other jobs to do, and yeah, it's just so warm. I can't be, I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. Now this bed sadly didn't live up to the name that I was hoping for it. Now I have got a pile of, um, 
sunflowers in here, poppies. These are the calianthus, which I'm really, really looking forward to. We've also got some calla lilies in here. There's some um, lupins in there, which we shall see. There's also some cornflowers. And also my favorite, my favorite grass over here as well is the flamingo grass. And at the back, we've got an uh, artichoke as well, a globe artichoke. But the sweet peas are doing amazing here. But this bed never ever got to how I wanted it to. And this bed pretty much suffered because I moved plots. But there's always next year. Now, one thing I want to do before it starts turning to seed is I want to start labeling some of the Oh, a bee just came out of there then. I want to start labeling some of these sweet peas so that I know which ones are which. Now, I'm okay to have mixtures, but these dark ones, I hope you can see it on the pitch, on the videos, because I'm sure I edited it before and it looked really, really red, but these are actually a really dark purple, like a Cadbury purple. So I want to label some of them at the plants so that I know when it goes to pods and they end all the same like this, I know that this is the purple sweet peas for next year. And the same goes for the red nasturtiums as well. I want to start labelling up some of the plants so that I know which ones are which for next year's seed. And I talk about this in lots of videos about saving seed. And most of the plants that I've got on this plot, flower-wise, are saved seed, you know, or you can save seed from, you know, sweet peas, nasturtiums, sunflowers, you know, you name it. You can actually save a few pennies by just saving seed for next year. Don't keep buying your flowers because there's a reason why they go to seed because they want to produce they want to create more so yeah think about that now as well look around your garden and start thinking about labeling some of the plants before they start dying down and going to seed so you know which colors they are and you can plan your garden for next year so as you can see in the jungle of mess the pumpkins now are starting to trail off Sadly, out of all the eight that I put in, I've got one, two, three, four, but that's okay. That's better than none. You know, that's better than none. So yeah, I'll be glad when all of this is done, but this is going to be an autumn project this part year. So it is what it is. Now I've looked at this fruit cage and I've shown it on videos before, and this one was handmade by wood and other plot holders and it's absolutely beautiful. And I've also showed they're like greenhouse sort of polytunnel house sort of thing at there probably a poly house that's a better word but if you look it's just a proper house um, and it has guttering on it which it collects water and stuff but going back to this pretty sure that this is probably the size of my fruit cage it looks about right and it's pretty big but at least I've got an idea now of how big my fruit cage is going to be and yeah how much footprint is going to take on the plot but I want to show you how you know it's just it's just a beautiful bit of ingenuity here so I, I love it so while collecting all the bits from the grapevine plot, I managed to take these two beams as well. Now they're like train sleepers or something and they're really, really thick and heavy. And I'm hoping to turn them into either some kind of feature or maybe a border for the new pond or even a seat or something. So if you've got some ideas for these two thick, and I mean they're thick chunky. So remember I got to saw this, so don't start thinking I should turn it into some kind of Jenga set or something. But if you've got any ideas for what I can do with these two big train sleepers, they're about eight foot long. Let me know in the comments. Now I did this last year by putting the membrane down, cutting some holes and the corn through it. Now there is some grass coming through the tomatoes, but overall it's pretty much weed free in this area and the corn now is starting to grow its tassels. So yeah, and I actually don't like corn and it was one of those things that I do grow that I don't like, um, but I grow it because I like the structures and family members like corn, but me in general, I just like the wavy leaves and it gives a nice bit of height in the plot. But look what I've just seen on here. A little ladybird. It's a roaring 48 degrees in the polytunnel. I am absolutely sweating. And I was tempted, tempted to put all the strings up on the remaining tomatoes, but definitely a job for either this evening or tomorrow so it's just too hot oh and by the way i'm danny and this is grow up 